Week 8, and as we all know, even outdoors, football officiating is all about your keys. And in the IFL, we try to tell you, if you stay with your key for two seconds, and that's before you shift the zone and helping out, you're going to see the foul if one occurs. So try staying on those keys for two seconds. Let's look at a couple of plays. Here our line judge's key is across the field. Do we have a legal contact? We have our pre-snap check down. He knows the umpire is at six, right? So that's our illegal contact line, the healthy five. Watch the action against the receiver here. And this is not illegal contact because it occurs within the healthy five. Correct no call. Nice focus. Staying on your key, Mr. Line Judge, not a down judge. Let's watch our official at the bottom. He's watching the ball and he's not watching his key who commits pass interference downfield, OPI. This player is the key for the wing official. He's going to go downfield and just take him out. Clearing space for the under nine, underneath route and setting up a block, and we've got no flag down. That's offensive pass interference. we got to stay on our keys. You're going to see most of the fouls within, what? Two seconds. One, 1,000. Boom. There it is. And our official does not even look. It's unacceptable. We do not want ball watchers. Stay on your keys for at least two seconds and get these easy fouls. Here is kind of focus we want. Our H is on his key. There's going to be a double move, which is always suspect for illegal contact. We're going to have the illegal contact. The H sees it, flags it. More importantly, continues to officiate the play. So stay on your key. What is it for? We'll count. We know the number. One, one thousand, two. Boom. Illegal contact. Flag it. Continue to officiate the play. Great mechanics. Next up, I think I got about eight plays with some illegal defenses, which is the bane of our existence, isn't it? Tough calls to get, but we do a good job getting them. Let's take a look. We always talk about making fouls big. Okay, we got alignment here, right? And alignment occurs at the snap. Watch what the DB does. He jumps to mirror a different receiver. And at the snap, which is right now, he's aligned on this, this receiver here. So this is not a foul. Good alignment. He gambled and he won. Alignment occurs at the snap. That's alignment. Now let's take it a step further. Let's say the receiver continues across. He's not going to be a motion man in the box at the snap. And the ball is snapped when he is here. And this guy is just planted there. That obviously would be a foul. But that's not the case here. So correct ju judgment not throwing on this as not big enough. In fact, it's not even there. Here's something to think about. Just like the DBs are, I've got stacked receivers. Now, he doesn't know what he's supposed to do. Go over here, come over here, come there. He's not sure. So when we have stacked receivers, our radar should go up. Quickly, we know where our belt is. It's back here because our umpire is at six. The belt is just inside him. We know where our ICT line is. And we know the 20 certainly is well inside the belt. He's inside the belt. He's not aligned. He's not sure where he's supposed to go, but at the snap. He's not aligned here, and he's not aligned here. And there's no one coming down the pike here. This is illegally inside the belt, unaligned. We've got to put a flag on the ground. The teaching point is, stacked receivers were just as confused as the DB may be here. He's not sure what he wants to do, so we can key off that and be on high alert for a DB illegally inside the belt unaligned, and we'll put a flag down on the ground next time. And here it's the first drive. The guy's legal, the defensive end is legal here, but it's close, so the back judge warned him, hey, I'm watching you, I'm watching you. Remember, we do not want to call this foul for the first time in the fourth quarter. Go ahead and warn early and less egregious, and then speak with a flag. Let's put more stuff on our referee here, but uh, pre-snap, you got somebody lurking like this, maybe catch this out of your peripheral vision pre-snap and what we're going to have here is an illegal blitz. He's just going to dart right in here unscathed. We know he's not a D lineman. We know he's not coming up the A gap 
And this is on the R. It's going to be tough to blame the U here because he's not watching the passer. But this isn't a linebacker, and the R needs to know that he's got the right guard for the block. And you got to see this rusher coming from the outside. Ball's in the alley. There's a reason that player's there, and it's because he blitzed illegally. Tough one, but we got to get it. Here we miss an illegal blitz by this player. Good mechanics by our H. Reed's pass starts sliding downfield, but he's got to catch that out of the corner of his eye because the back, meaning, uh, I'm sorry, the DB, immediately goes into the offensive backfield. The ball's still in the alley. And if we don't throw a flag here, this is just going to continue. Umpire may pick this up at his, out of his periphery, but that is an illegal blitz. He cannot penetrate the line of scrimmage. The ball's in the alley. That is an illegal blitz. Let's cement that in our mind. I know we got a lot going on. No one said this was easy. Right in front of your face. Umpire should probably get a look at that also. We want to flag down for illegal outside blitz. Here we got a correct call for defender not down in his stance at the snap. And if in fact he got back, he'd still be in the neutral zone, so that would be a foul also. But if he went to replay, this is what we see. He's up, he's up, he's going back down, but the ball has been snapped. So let's look at it again in replay. We can go frame by frame. The defensive end, he's up, and the ball's moving now. There's the ball. It's moving. He hasn't made it back down, and if he did, he'd be in the neutral zone anyway. So good call. Imagine you're the umpire on this play. What foul jumps out? Bingo. Linebacker. Not stationary at the snap. This is huge. Good get by the umpire. Drop the flag. Continue to officiate the play. What should our back judge see here? Lots of daylight in there. We want to get this stuff early. Warn early. Get him in tight. He's outside shoulder to shoulder. There is daylight in here. This is a foul. We're going to warn early, and then we're going to flag it. Obviously, if it's egregious, you know, if he's uh, out here, it's egregious. But right now, if this is early in the game, warn it. We don't want to be throwing this flag for the first time late in the fourth quarter. Get control of this foul early. Warn once, and then start speaking with a flag, and get this player lined up legally, shoulder to shoulder, widest. There should be no daylight in there. Get this stuff early so we don't have to be dealing with it in the fourth quarter. As a staff, we're doing tremendous work with our mechanics. I know they're difficult, but we're, we're starting week nine, and the mechanics look really, really good on the field. Let's take a look. What's the umpire know on this play? He knows the ball snapped at the 20. He's got the 25 as a big line for the belt. And he knows his two linebackers are inside of it. So the good preventive officiating pulling them back to prevent a foul. Good job, especially when you got a big line here, like the 25, marking your belt. Perfect goal line mechanics. To the goal line at the snap, to the goal line at the snap, to the goal line at the snap. We'll slow it down, and it's poetry in motion. Look at that. you got to love the excellent goal line mechanics here. Check out the top of the screen, really good goal line mechanics here. To the goal line at the snap, just a solid call with no hesitation to mark the ball short. Look at that. Excellent goal line mechanics. Pristine reverse mechanics. We're going to have an interception. Our referee is going to set up on the goal line. we got a catch. Our wing at the top has turned around. He's got the wall all the way, and that referee, where is he? Boom. Right on the goal line. Pristine mechanics. He's going to check. He's going to confirm. He's going to go up. Check. There's the point, and go up. Pristine reverse mechanics. And it's now reminder time. We're going to look at some plays that don't fit into a box this week. Let's take a look. Watch what happens to this player here. 
I know we got a philosophy, we don't flag double team holds, but when we get a takedown, he's picked up and thrown to the ground like this, that's a big one we got to get. This was a huge miss. Generally, double teams are not holds, but when he's thrown to the ground like that, we got to have a flag. Really good shot here of an illegal formation. Let's review the offensive box. We've got a big line here at the 15. The offensive box, outside, shoulder to shoulder. It goes back five yards, so we've got the big line. So that is the offensive box. Good job by the crew getting this. Number 28 is a back. He is stationary, and he is lined up within three yards of the left guard. This is a foul for illegal formation. Note, if 28 was lined up Back here, behind the offensive box, the three-yard restriction does not apply. The restriction only applies when the stationary back is within three yards of the guard and inside five. Again, if the back was back here at six yards, it would be a legal formation. But it's not. Also, you could argue he's got one foot in the box here. Maybe. You could argue that. It doesn't matter. The coaches and the officials need to understand. For 28 to be legal here, he's got to have both feet inside the box. So he'd have to move over here. Both feet in the box. You're in the box. One foot in and one foot out, you're out of the box. Keep this in mind moving forward. Both feet in, you're in. One in, one out, you're out. If he's back here, he can be there, he can be there, he can be there, because he is outside of the five yards. I just love we had a play like this that could actually... I could draw my perfect, almost perfect lines and show the offensive box. But you all get the idea. This is a great call by the crew here. Illegal formation by the offense. Five yards. And here we have another shot of a different illegal formation. The back here is within three yards of the guard and he's stationary. He's got one foot in and one foot out. That puts him out. Remember. Two feet in the box, you're in. If you got one in and one out, you're out. Outside shoulder, he's got one foot out. There's our box, just reviewing our offensive box. If we have a back stationary back here, he's legal. He's certainly legal. But... Stationary, within three yards, one foot in, one, fat, one foot out. This is an illegal formation at the snap. I think this was the first drive, so I don't have a problem warning on the first drive, but you know we're getting into week nine. The teams and the coaches should know what an illegal formation is. But again, first drive, I don't think anything happened. A short gain here, so no harm warning on this. It didn't affect the play, but uh, once would be enough. Uh, no problem on the first drive warning, as long as we didn't have a egregious result here. So uh, no effect on the play. Warn early, but then you got to flag it. We got to get these illegal formations out of here. On this play, we're going to have a correct call for an intentional grounding in the end zone. Really good crew communication here. Remember the play from last week when uh, we had a failure to communicate and the crew ended up getting the play wrong. But here, the ball's in the alley. The ball never reached the line of scrimmage, and of course there's no receiver in the area. So this is a correct call, but more importantly is the great communication to ensure the correctness of the call. Ball's in the alley, still in the alley. He's just throwing it away. Ball never got back to the line of scrimmage. The crew talked and got it correct. Good work. Here, we're towards the end of the game. It's a 35-point differential here so we got to be on the alert for this kind of nonsense fouls and for lack of a better word dirty plays this is what we're trying to eliminate from the game 
Number nine is going to come here and just knock a player on his butt away from the play, and then he's got to run his mouth, and no one has a flag down. That's the kind of plays we're trying to get out of the game. Be alert, especially in these blowout-type games towards the end. Back, Judge. You watching number nine go off the field? Look, the offense, they know, hey, it's time for a free play for us, but we don't have a flag down for an illegal substitution, so so much for a free play. But we do have an incorrect call down for DPI. As we look at the DPI, you're going to see the receiver has no idea where the ball is. He's not even playing the ball. There's no restrictions, no steps are taken away, and he's not displaced. This is not DPI. We want fouls bigger. What do we like to say? If you think you saw a foul, you didn't see it, it's got to jump out at you. This is a whole lot of nothing. Make it big. Here we're going to have a correct no call for illegal scrimmage kick rush. This is probably the best job I've seen by a player tiptoeing to the line after jumping and not breaching the line. We certainly would want to warn this player to be careful, but that is perfectly legal. He does not penetrate the line of scrimmage. Great job by the player, great athleticism, and not a foul. You have to be ready for everything. Motion man in the box. Remember, it's got to be there to call a foul. If they're on the edge, it's not. And we're always expecting a motion receiver to come through the box like that. Let's watch him. He is a motion receiver in the box at the snap. We got to get this. Stationary, and he moves. And the ball is snapped. He is in the box. This is an illegal play. Motion man in the box at the snap. We'll stop it at the snap. If we go to replay, the ball has been snapped. This is big enough. This is actually what we call huge. The snap has occurred. We got to be ready for that. I know it's unexpected that type of motion receiver in the box, but that is a motion receiver in the box which you must flag. Just a reminder here: when the uh, umpire moves into the offensive backfield, we want our back judge to assume the role of the umpire back here. So, good job letting the uh, backer know where the belt is. And in accord with the notes from this week, we still want you to point, even though there's only one backer aligned on the belt at the back of the box, we still want you to point and hold that point until the snap. Also, down below, we've got some good preventive officiating right here. In the past, this would be a sideline warning. Coach up here is legal. He's out of the way. That's good enough. We don't want to bother with this. But down here, he's in our way. So the umpire just pulls him back and the coach complies, so good work there. Here's a good reminder. Our back stationed in the box can block the blitzing linebacker or the defensive ends below the waist. He cannot block the nose below the waist, so correct no call here. Just remember the rule. Who can that back block below the waist? The defensive ends or the blitzing linebackers not the nose. After this scrimmage kick, we're going to see the umpire immediately go in and talk to the back who jumped but did not cross the line of scrimmage. Good preventive officiating here. Let's the uh, 21 know that he's good, but he can't go any further in. We've talked about this this week and the last two weeks. So that's legal. He's jumping at the three. He's landing on the three. He's not crossing into the neutral zone, but good preventive officiating. And that wraps up week eight. We got four games this weekend, so it's a light week. But if you're working, remember 100% focus each and every play. You cannot take a play off. 100% focus, lasered in every play. Play ends, reset, 100% laser focus again. That's how we do our job and we do it efficiently and professionally. Keep up the hard work. If you're working this weekend, have a great game. If not, enjoy your time off, and I'll talk to you next week.